always thought that Chinese was way too difficult. It was a language I never was going to study. I dabble in it here and there. I knew like ni hao. And that was all I knew, and I knew that tones existed. The last 16 days, actually more like the last 10 days, I've been kind of studying and researching how to study Chinese, and I'm getting excited about the idea of actually learning Chinese. So I always thought the Chinese was way too difficult, but uh, Yo-Yo Chinese is one resource that the first few lessons of that, uh, there's just little four-minute videos, and you take a quick quiz, and those videos helped me to see how not difficult Chinese really is. Like, I wanted to talk today about some of the things that make Chinese actually kind of easy to learn. So uh, once I saw this video, I was like, oh, Chinese isn't that difficult. Um, we, as a native English speaker, English is one of the most complicated languages ever. If you look at its grammar and if you look at the spelling rules, all these things make English so difficult. There's so many exceptions to every single rule. Spelling is never consistent. Sounds don't make sense. I mean, we have five vowels, sometimes six vowels, and half the time they all make the same uh, shua sound. Like, English makes no sense. English is challenging and difficult. If you can speak English, you can speak another language. And even though Chinese is so different, I don't think that it's that difficult. And I, I, like I said, I haven't really started studying, but what I'm seeing, these are some of the things that I'm seeing that makes Chinese um, easier to learn than I expected. Not necessarily easy, but easier to learn than I'd expected. Because I was putting it off the, oh my gosh, Chinese is way too difficult for me. I'm just going to kind of put it over there and not really touch it because it's too hard. But I think Chinese is going to be easier than I thought. So here are some of the reasons why. First of all, the verb stays the same. <laughs> My Chinese is very bad so far, so I don't know. But like, So I'm not going to use Chinese examples, but he says, she says, they say, uh, you say, I say, like, it's all the same word. Say, said, says, it's the same word. And for future tense and past tense, you add a word to it. You don't change the verb. The verb stays the same. Verb conjugations don't happen. That, okay, so that makes it super easy. And in addition to that, you don't have verb conjugations with gender. The verbs don't have gender, and the nouns don't have gender. So gender exists, like there's male and female, there's he and she. It's the same spoken word, but written it's different. But verbs don't change based on gender. Verbs don't change based on tense. So that's, that simplifies things so much. That to me is like, that's huge. <laughs> Americans have a lot of the sounds in our language. We just use them differently. And Americans can make most, not most, more than half of the sounds. So less than most, but still a lot of the sounds. The sentence structure is relatively similar to English. I love you. Uh, wo, I, ni is I love you. You love me, ni I wo, ni I wo, you love me, like the sentence structure is the same. And there's differences, it gets more complicated. One of the challenging things about Chinese is there's so many words, there's so many characters, there's so many sounds, there's so many tones, and a lot of that is memorization. Memorization isn't fun, it's challenging, but it's a lot of front end work. It seems like once you get a lot of that memorization down, it builds on itself. Like it gets easier to learn as you go. I don't know. I'm guessing there's still the intermediate plateau that I've hit in Portuguese and Spanish and Hindi, and I just kind of stop there. Um, but so I'm guessing there's still that same plateau. But it seems like a lot of the work is up front, and then it's not that. Like it it, it works on itself, and it gets easier. Like the character for ni ni um ni, which is you. Uh, is very similar to the character for Nin. I don't know how to pronounce that one, but it has, it's the same character with like, what makes it polite underneath of it. So it's, it's like the politeness goes underneath the same character for you, and it's, so it's just a polite you. And so it's things like that, where it, the characters seem to make sense. It's like building blocks. There's a lot of characters and a lot of memorization. But I think if you memorize the pinyin, pinyin or pinyin, along with the character at the same time, and you memorize those together along with the English meaning, I think you're setting yourself up for success. And I'm extremely visual, so I think the visual aspect of that is helpful uh, as well. There are no other languages that I have studied or I'm around that I will mix it up with. Um, Spanish and Portuguese, I get mixed up all the time. Like dabbling in French, I mix in Portuguese all the time. Like I, Chinese just, it isn't, um, it's so, so different that at least in this stage, 
I will not mix it up with anything. It's so different. I think that's really helpful. Another thing is the accessibility of it. It's really easy to find resources. A lot of languages, like Somali, I've dabbled in. There's just not resources for those languages. It's really hard to find very much. Chinese has a lot of resources that are pretty easy to find and use. It's, uh, what is it? It's like National UN uh, Chinese Day, something like that. Uh, and I just started working for VIP Kid. So I'm going to challenge you guys to join me in learning Chinese. Uh, if you work for VIP Kid, if you teach English to Chinese children online through one of the various formats, if you have always wanted to learn a language, if you are interested in Chinese, I'm going to challenge you to learn Chinese. I think it's something that I, I want to bring you along with. I want to share tips and tricks and share what I'm doing, and I hope that my learning will uh, help you guys. And if you're teachers, I hope that my learning and my tips and tricks will help you in the classroom teach your students how to learn Chinese better. I hope that you can, if you're a teacher, I hope that uh, my tips and tricks and what I'm learning can help you to learn Chinese as well so that you can help your students learn English and you understanding their language and culture will help them in the classroom as well. So I hope that, I hope these videos will be helpful and if you enjoy this type of thing, subscribe. I'll keep doing more videos, but yeah, I'm going to be doing Chinese for a while. I have other languages down below or in the other languages as well. Thanks for watching guys and happy National Chinese Language Day. Happy, I think that's what it's called, UN Chinese Language Day. If you've studied Chinese, tell me below what your experience has been. Am I totally wrong? I could be. I might be totally off. If you speak Chinese, am I wrong? Are these grammar things, am, am I understanding this completely wrong? I might be. I'm totally willing to take feedback. I don't know what I haven't been taught. Uh, so, so let me know down below. Teach me some Chinese. Uh, if you have any good resources as well, let's share those. So, okay.